They look like ordinary plants, quiet, still, rooted in place. But not everything green survives on sunshine and soil. In some forgotten swamps and misty jungles, there are plants that trap, dissolve, and digest, not for defense, but for food. These are plants that eat flesh, not monsters, just master survivors of the natural world. Let's step into the world of carnivorous plants. Most plants grow quietly, drawing nutrients from the soil and energy from the sun. But in some corners of the world, where the soil is too poor to support life, a different kind of plant has evolved. These plants have adapted to something extraordinary. They survive by feeding on other living organisms. They are carnivorous plants. Unlike animals, these plants don't hunt or chase, but they trap, dissolve, and absorb nutrients from insects and sometimes even small animals. Their existence is not about aggression, but about survival in some of the planet's most nutrient-deficient environments. Bogs, swamps, acidic wetlands, and rain-soaked mountain slopes. The evolution of carnivorean plants is directly linked to poor soil conditions. In areas where nitrogen and phosphorus are scarce, these plants developed mechanisms to gain those nutrients in other ways. The most successful method turned out to be extracting them from the bodies of insects and small prey. Over time, they developed specialized leaves that function as traps, lures, and even digestive systems. The Venus flytrap is one of the best known examples. Native to the wetlands of North and South Carolina in the United States, it has modified leaves that snap shut when triggered by movement. Inside the leaf are sensitive trigger hairs. When an insect touches two of these hairs within 20 seconds, the trap closes. If the insect continues to struggle, the trap seals further, forming a chamber where digestion begins. Enzymes break down the prey over several days, and the plant absorbs the nutrients. Another well-known group of carnivorous plants is the pitcher plants. These plants use passive traps, deep, slippery chambers filled with digestive fluid. Insects are attracted to the rim by nectar or scent, only to fall inside. The inner walls are too slick to climb, and once they fall in, they drown and slowly decompose. Pitcher plants are widespread, with many species found in North America, Southeast Asia, and South America. Some of the largest, like Nepenthes raja and Borneo, can trap not only insects, but also frogs, lizards, and even small rodents. Sundews, or Drosera, are another large group of carnivorous plants. Their leaves are covered with glandular hairs that exude a sticky substance. These glistening droplets resemble dew, attracting insects. When an insect lands, it becomes stuck, and the leaf slowly curls around it. Digestion begins with the help of enzymes secreted from the same glands that produce the sticky trap. Over time, the plant absorbs the released nutrients. Underwater, bladder warts operate with remarkable speed. These aquatic carnivorous plants use small bladder-like traps with a vacuum mechanism. When a tiny aquatic animal comes near, the bladder's door opens inward and sucks the prey in, closing within milliseconds. This is one of the fastest known movements in the plant kingdom. Bladder warts are found in freshwater lakes, ponds, and marshes around the world. Some plants, like butterworts or pinguicula, rely on sticky, greasy-looking leaves that trap insects. Once caught, the leaf produces enzymes to digest the prey. Butterworts are commonly found in Europe and North America, often growing in moist and hull limestone-rich habitats. Then there are the lesser-known plants like Genlisea, also called corkscrew plants. These grow in wet, sandy soil, and capture microscopic organisms using underground tubular traps. The traps guide the prey through spiraling passageways lined with backward-facing hairs, making escape impossible. These plants specialize in protozoa, 
and bacteria living in the waterlogged soil. Interestingly, carnivory in plants has evolved multiple times independently in different parts of the world. Scientists call this convergent evolution, where unrelated species develop similar traits due to similar environmental pressures. In total, over 800 species of carnivorous plants are known today, spread across more than a dozen different genera. The habitats where these plants thrive are often fragile ecosystems. Carnivorous plants are highly adapted to very specific conditions, constant moisture, acidic or nutrient-poor soils, and open sunlight. Changes in water levels, pollution, or habitat loss can quickly put them at risk. Many of these species are now considered vulnerable or endangered due to habitat destruction and illegal collection. Some species of pitcher plants have even developed mutualistic relationships with animals. For example, in Borneo, Nepenthes lowi has evolved a special structure to feed on tree shrew droppings. The plant produces a sweet nectar on its lid, attracting the animal while the shrew feeds. It perches above the pitcher and defecates into it. The plant absorbs nutrients from the dropping rather than from prey. This unusual adaptation allows the plant to thrive in high-altitude environments with fewer insects. Inside the pitchers of some species, entire microhabitats exist. Tiny invertebrates live in the liquid, feeding on trapped prey or helping to break it down. In return, the plant benefits from the cleaner breakdown of organic matter. These miniature ecosystems demonstrate how even in something as small as a leaf trap, multiple layers of life and interaction can exist. Despite their adaptations, carnivorous plants grow slowly. Most only trap what they need to survive and do not feed constantly. Their traps are costly to build, and in many cases, the plant will not reset the trap if the prey is too small or not nutrient-rich. For example, Venus flytraps won't complete a full digestion cycle if the trapped object isn't alive. This selectiveness helps conserve energy, even without a nervous system. Some of these plants show complex responses. Researchers have discovered electrical signals in plants like the Venus flytrap. Similar to nerve impulses in animals, these signals trigger the trap movement and also regulate digestion. Plants like Drosera have shown memory-like behavior, adjusting their response based on the intensity of touch or the size of prey. These traits are still being studied to understand how much information processing is possible in organisms without brains. Throughout history, carnivorous plants have fascinated people. From early naturalists who doubted their existence to modern scientists exploring their genetics and behavior, these plants continue to surprise us. While they're sometimes portrayed as dangerous or mysterious, they are actually delicate survivors shaped by extreme environments. Their real danger is not to us, but from us. The habitats where they grow are often drained for agriculture, polluted or matched by climate change. Many species are collected illegally for the exotic plant trade, further pushing them toward extinction. Conservation efforts are now focused on protecting their natural homes and reducing human disturbance. Carnivorous plants are not common. They make up only a small fraction of the plant world, but they are a powerful reminder of how life can adapt in unusual, even extreme ways. And that was the story of carnivorous plants. Not just a glimpse, but a journey through one of nature's most extraordinary strategies. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Nature's Diary for more amazing stories of our world. See you next time.